And now I'm at year 23, going on my year 23rd year. And again, I've seen this before. This isn't something that um, I've looked at now and I go, wow, I can't believe this is going on. You know, we got to sit on our hands. This is, you know, this is, this is an opportunity. Right so, yeah. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody is doing well. So crazy start to the year, right? I again, you're not going to hear any, you know, you're not going to hear any pity pot, uh, parties coming out of me, anything negative coming out of me, um, anything that's somber, the, the, the idea that this is a funeral that we're all attending. This is the stock market, right? This is the absolute stock market. Um, I know a lot of you guys are great, great people. Um, and this is kind of your first entry to kind of what declining stock prices look like, right? This is literally the first time. A lot of you guys have been trading for less than two, three years. And some of you guys have been trading for two, three months. And all you think, all you've seen has been uh, steady rising stock prices. Uh, you've seen uh, incredible moves, just absolute incredible moves, especially in the last five years. Uh, stocks going from three to 300. It's been crazy, but the one thing that most of you guys have not experienced has been the decline. And declining stock prices, asset classes all over the board is real. And when you go back to uh, the start of my career, again, this isn't the first time we talked about it. From 2000 and 2001 to 2003, I couldn't make a dime, right? I was coming off the euphoria of the, the internet craze and years and years later, uh, you know, I've, I've realized it, admit it, it was completely lucky, right? I was completely lucky my first uh, 18 months in this business that, you know, the internet was here. This is a free for all. It doesn't make a difference what you bought. Again, if you've ever watched um, that interview with uh, me and Meyer Hoffman, the late, great Meyer Hoffman, he said, uh, you know, look, we got lucky, right? He didn't say in those words, but we got lucky. Basically, the market made you right. Any prices that you bought weren't important. It's the point is the market made you right. And that's what's been going on for three, four, five years. And a lot of, uh, unfortunately, new traders got caught up into, it doesn't make a difference where I buy. I could chase at any level. The market would always make me right. And that was great. And that was fantastic. And that was the case. And now it's not, right? And instead of sitting there, uh, what I did from 2001 to 2003, didn't make a dime, uh, was absolutely my worst moments in my life, those darkest moments. Suicide was very, very real in my mind. I went over it many, many times because I couldn't figure out how could I have done so well during the internet craze and not make a penny throughout these years. And I was depressed um, and it was incredibly tough time of my life. But I realized years later when my wife pretty much gave me an ultimatum, it's over, right? It's over. That great part of your life is over and now you're in this crap and the, and the crap is how are you going to get out of this crap? You can mentally let this crap and let your circumstances completely consume you on a day-to-day -day basis uh, and windle you down and take you down mentally, or you could do something about it. And again, the one thing that the stock market, and I've always said this, it's not there to, to, to make you whole. It's not there uh, to give you that, that fix of uh, euphoria or that, or that gambling fix, whatever you want to call it. It's the stock market's the stock market. Again, if you go from uh, the 1927 crash to kind of where we are this morning, uh, you'll notice the same thing. The stock market will go up, traditionally go up, uh, engulf in a lot of bad news, and then eventually it will go down again only to wipe out a whole generation of, uh, of new traders and start the cycle right back again. And that's, and again, it's too early to say how deep uh, this decline is going to be. But the one thing that I figured out uh, you know, by 2003, and although my wife did give me a pretty much an ultimatum, say, hey, listen, uh, you know, that's cool at all. You did great during the dot-com craze. It's two years later, our, our, our money supply is depleting. Well, what do you want to do next? You got to get a job. And, uh, you know, I got a lifeline on another trading desk because of what we did uh, during the dot-com era. And I got lucky again. It was the right place at the right time. But I finally figured out how to, you know, I finally figured out because I bought some time in between 2004 to kind of 2007, I kind of bought myself some time to figure out, you know, how the game works very, very first innings. And it really did take me 
about 10 to 12 years to finally get comfortable in my own skin. And now I'm at year 23, going on my year 23rd year. And again, I've seen this before. This isn't something that um, I've looked at now and I go, wow, I can't believe this is going on. You know, we got to sit on our hands. This is, you know, this is, this is an opportunity right now. So you have two choices. You could sit there and feel sorry for yourself because you've never seen it before, which is fine, which is absolutely normal. Or you can take the environment you have, right? And kind of try to make, you know, try to make something out of it and put yourself in a position of strength instead of position of weakness. Again, this market did not fall for the first time in the last couple of days that everybody's so surprised. The market's been falling. You have, you have a lot of these growth stories we've been talking about for months now. A lot of these growth stories have, have, have gotten destroyed. I mean, absolutely destroyed. You had uh, NET, I mean, look, look at these moves. You had NET going from 221 into the 80s. You have UPST uh, that had this incredible, I mean, there's a lot of it. Some of these stocks have gotten 50, 70% haircuts. It's, it's not something that you woke up to one day and say, wow, these stocks are really getting killed. Yeah, and the, the only difference between now what you're seeing in as far as the indexes go and what you started seeing uh, in November was the stocks and people realize this, people stop paying for potential, okay? It's like, again, if eventually, you know, with all the Kobe Bryants and Kevin Garnett's and Tracy McGrady's, uh, they got drafted out of high school and they were great. They were paying for potential. You know, there came the Kwame Browns, right? There came uh, guys that you've never heard of before. And then eventually the, all these GMs, they said, oh, wait a minute, I don't know how great it is to draft these uh, guys out of high school. And they stopped paying for potential. And that's exactly what happened here. All these stocks had these massive, massive runs and people didn't care what prices they were buying. Eventually they said, ah, we're good. And the only real reason Main Street really started feeling effects, most people don't know what a UPST is. They don't know what an NET is. They don't know what a letter U is, but they know what Apple is. And most funds and mutual funds and index funds are holding it. They know what Amazon is because again, most, Am you know, most index funds and mutual funds and hedge funds are owning them. And once those stocks started to get pulled, that's when people started paying attention. So yes, the, the sell-off came in November, right? Of growth stories, but the real money flow, right? The institutional holdings that we've been uh, seeing and talking about, and you know, primarily I've been, I've been trading for years and years and years, the beta names, now they started feeling the effects. And what you started seeing in November, and you can make an argument stocks being sold then, that's great. But my world, right? My world of these names, of these high beta mega cap technology names, once they started cracking, that's when the money flow started coming out and there was a buyer strike for institutional money flow. So nobody cared about UPST at 225 if a mutual fund doesn't even know this company's alive, but they start caring when Amazon starts cracking down, when Netflix starts cracking down, when Apple and Facebook and, and, and uh, Nvidia and Tesla, right? That's kind of a big deal and that's kind of where we are. And when you look at uh, all the indexes, uh, you, know, you know, it's really pretty, pretty ugly, right? You got an 11% decline on, on the Qs you know, three weeks into the year, right? You know, that's a pretty, pretty big decline. You, you got nearly uh, a 7.6% decline just for the week, you know, very, very aggressive, but more important, it, it shouldn't, you know, if you, if, especially if you've been watching this broadcast or just uh, a pure enthusiasm for, from the chart, basic technical analysis point of view, you saw the breakdowns, you saw the breakdowns off the 50, you saw the breakdowns off the 100, you saw the breakdowns uh, off of the 150 day moving average, just kind of watching this video in the last you know few days. And here's the problem, you know, now we've closed below uh, the 200 day moving average two days in a row. And that's a big deal because the longer we build below the 200 day moving average, the higher probability you're going to see uh, further decline in prices. And when you look at the monthly chart, just to give you an idea where the potential next level can be, right? We talked about this on Wednesday or Thursday's video. Uh, any close below this macro trend line starts the next cycle uh, to the next rising monthly support and the next ru monthly rising support. Again, especially if you believe in the theory of stocks trading from supply to supply. Well, you know, stocks trade then from demand to demand and the, this demand is all the way to 328 uh, on the queues, which considering we close at 351, yeah, you got a, you got, you got a pretty good amount of downside uh, to go. Now, again, I, I think because social media and unfortunately only, only uh, you guys, a lot of you guys are only just subjected to the views of social media. You know, the, 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 the story is always buy the dip, bears never, you know, bears never learn, buy the dip, bears never learn, bears learn, right? There's a, there's a reason why bears are bears and the reason why bulls are bulls. They're usually one-sided and they stay in that direction. And bears have been winning, even with this whole 
big cycle for the last five years. Again, if you're if you're a good technician or even a de pretty decent technician, you could pick your spots to the downside. You don't need to catch stocks going to zero. You could just catch stocks going into channels. But you know, this is kind of their game, right? You know, and I, I'm not a perma bull, I'm not a perma bear, I'm a I'm a perma realist. And you know, I've traded both sides of the market. Uh, I've seen this, <laughs> I've seen this movie now for from 2001 to 2003 to from 2007 to 2009. The question is, and this is where something we, we we don't have an answer to. The question is, how long will this decline will be? The optimism, right? The optimism in all of us, right? Because everybody loves a bull market. Uh, the optimism in all of us will turn around and say, well, it's all, it should only be another couple of days. Eventually, stocks are already over, over, oversold. They're not, guys. They're not. <laughs> the Qs have gone from, from 164 to 400. They're not oversold. That's the whole point. And again, you can, you can start making that, you know, that conversation, that argument in the first two weeks of 2001 after 9-11. In the first couple of weeks after 2007, when they started talking about the mortgage crisis, they lasted for two, three years. Again, I'm not trying to scare anybody. I mean, these are facts. You can go back and look at your charts. Go back to your history books. This is exactly what happens. I would love, in a perfect world, uh, for the bulls to kind of wash out, throw the baby out with the bathwater this week, and reclaim the 200-day moving average and, have, and start this really aggressive cycle back to the backup. No, nobody would love it more than me. Again, I love a good uh, bull run, but I also am a realist, and real, I understand how to read chart prices. I understand how to read charts. And again, if you look at uh, the monthly, right, the monthly view on the Qs, then you have 328 is your next measure potential. Not saying it's going to get there, but it's your next measure potential. You have eyes. And again, this is the greatest uh, indicator in the world without the whole Fibonacci's and this, that, the other thing, the VWAPs, and no, no matter the channels, the indexes, right? If you have eyes and you can see where your next potential landing spot is and you have to be mentally prepared for that and that's the most important thing it's not fear monitoring it's just kind of reality um and the most important part is guys even if you are traders you, you got to get that whole you know buy the dip mentality out of your head buy the dip and i've been saying this for years buy the dip is is something that is in a bull market cycle that stocks are coming off their highs and coming back into this 60 minute either rising 60 minute channels or rising daily support when the stock market is underneath supply, and this is not just the cues, this is the cues, uh, these, these are the right, these are the spies, right? They're all underneath supply under the, the diamonds. Okay, this is not this is not a time that you turn around and say this is the first day underneath supply, the second day underneath supply, macro supply that started years ago. This is not your first time to say, all right, Monday, here's my shopping list. The market can't possibly go uh, any lower. These, these are gifts. These are free shares. This is free money. Not so fast, right? Not so fast. Uh, again, guys, remember, stocks need to be above demand to go long and below supply to continue selling. And we are the mother load, right? We've closed, not like we closed below the five day, the shortest term sentiment. We've closed below the 200 day moving average. And that's the mother, mother, mother loads of, of demand. And uh, that's gonna be an absolute issue. And when you look at the catalyst or lack of catalyst kind of coming up to this week, number one, you saw uh, earnings kick off this week. You saw the banks, you know, disappoint, right? You got banks disappoint. You got go JP Morgan. Uh, you got uh, Goldman Sachs. You had Netflix kick off earnings, right? They kicked off earnings. The sub sub subscribers growth was not great. You had some news in the market about Peloton. And again, nobody should be turning around and say, wow, I, I can't believe it. I, I'm, I've been... I've been so, uh, you know, I'm so stunned that the stock went down. I mean, the stock has just gotten destroyed, right? So some news, some extra news that came out. And again, we don't know if it's even real. There's some, there's some news, there's some contrary news uh, turning around and saying, well, the news of potential production halts on their uh, treadmills and their bikes. Uh, yeah, that might not be true. We don't know, right? We saw the news come in on uh, Thursday. The stock got destroyed and we got some uh, defense coming in and say, hey, maybe, you know, maybe this is some some false narratives uh, that somebody started and the stock bounced back a little bit. We, we'll never know, right? We'll, we'll never know until we have a definitive statement uh, coming somewhere. Again, but the point is, look, look at the stock. Do you, do you really want to be long uh, Peloton going into Monday? Maybe it goes up, maybe it doesn't, right? Maybe there's a dead cat bounce at some point. At some point, even BlackBerry, right? Uh, you know, when, when everybody started switching to iPhones and Samsung's and even the Google Pixels, people turn around and say, how could BlackBerry still be uh, alive? Well, yeah, they have billions of dollars of intellectual properties. That's how BlackBerry stayed alive. So Peloton could drift to a drift, which kind of a bounce back, but their intellectual property makes them sexy. That's why the stock will not go to zero. They also, by the way, have a tremendous uh, cult following. I have a Peloton. 
I don't really use it. I've used it five times maybe in five years, but my wife does. And there's a lot of people that have a tremendous, tremendous love for the product. Uh, and it is a huge cult following. And the fact that they have X amount of millions of riders, that is value co combined with their intellectual property. So the stock will not go to zero, okay? I think it's very, very silly just the way BlackBerry didn't go to zero. But again, do you really wanna own uh, this stock? Just like owning any anything else uh, in the market coming in, in Monday. And just because we've, you know, we've seen prices decline in the stock market, well, now you're seeing it coming across of all asset classes. You see Bitcoin uh, getting hit, right? You see Bitcoin getting hit. Um, I'm personally waiting for to make my first uh, investment of Ethereum. Um, I, I think at some point this this weekend I will. Right now it's like 2400. Uh, you know I can see it drifting to 1800. Again, I know nothing about crypto, but if, if you believe in the whole theory that this is like the first stages of the next big thing of this whole blockchain, this that the other thing, hey, it's worth a shot, right? Anywhere you know anywhere from like 1500 to 2500 if you're willing to hold it five ten years. You know, you got to look at it yourself, and this is the way this is the way I'm kind of looking at it. You know, either Ethereum is going to go to zero, or it's going to go back, to, or it's going to go to ten thousand. Either way, allocate some capital, see you where you are in five years. Don't ever uh, invest in something that you you eventually can't see going to zero. And again, is it possible Ethereum in five ten years goes to ten thousand? Absolutely. Is it possible it goes to zero? Absolutely. Right? There's this. There's no such things as guaranteed. So anything that you're investing long term, well, it has to be long term. And you almost in the back of your head have to say to yourself, I'm allocating these funds. If they go to zero, it kind of sucks. But again, make sure they have no bearings on your long term financial goal, financial plan, and make sure it doesn't hurt your, your wallet. And you know, that's sitting there up 24 hours a day uh, checking prices. That's what an investment is. Again, you can invest in precious metals, you can invest in art, you can invest in Bitcoin and Ethereum and anything else in the stock market. Make sure, again, it's not emotionally taking you to the woodshed and, and really damaging your, the overall quality of your life. So if you can't hold something, don't invest in it. If you can't uh, wrap your mind around it, don't invest in it. And the most important part is this is business is a business. It's just like anything else. It's like the way uh, is uh, the way a carpenter uh, would handle his tools. Is this the way you know a waitress would handle her notepad? It's a business. Handle this business just like anything else. Detach yourself from this business. Detach yourself it from your personal life, uh, from anything you have going on. Because at the end of the day, it's just another ends to make means, and it shouldn't concentrate and it should spill over uh, into your personal life. So again, is it possible we get some sort of relief rally this week yeah sure of course but again the most important part and you you've kind of seen it uh throughout the whole week any single time there's been any type of rally literally any type of rally uh in the queues and they get slammed right they go back into supply and then they get slammed another rally and then they get slammed that's been happening the whole week so is it possible we have a dead cat rally this week yeah, at some point, right? As the, but the key is the, the queues, they have to reclaim this 367 level. They have to. If, if, they're, if, if you're looking to swing a position, you're not looking to catch a knife. You're looking for, the, for at least technically for the market to give you a green light, at least in the short term, to give yourself a point of reference. So if I'm looking for a longer term play, aren't you at least, if you wanna buy Microsoft, if you wanna buy Apple, shouldn't you at least wait for the cues to reclaim, to kind of, for the bulls to reclaim back short term, uh, short term technical damage and start closing above prices where they broke down? That's the smart play. You can't just sit there and go, Microsoft is cheap at 300, then Microsoft is cheap at 280, Microsoft's cheap at 260, Microsoft's cheap at 240. There's no guarantees these things ever come up. So again, the optimism in, the optimism in all of us are, are gonna turn around and say, hey, the market is, you know, is, is way oversold, although, although it's not. Uh, it's gonna come back this week, it may not, but the most important part is, again, guys, don't guess, okay? We're all bad guessers, don't guess. Uh, it's all about data. And right now, if you look at a lot of charts, uh, they're not even, you know, don't even look at the ones that are overextended. Start looking at the ones uh, that haven't broken down. So, you know, I'm very, I mean, how can you, again, how can you be bull biased? Again, possible to get a dead cat bounce at some point this week? Sure, absolutely. But I am by no chance, uh, absolutely no chance uh, buy bias until we reclaim, right? Until we reclaim uh, at least 
the 200 day moving average on the queues. And again, if you look at a lot of charts, you're not looking at Amazon right now, right? You're not looking at Amazon after this breakdown here of 3124, that's 300 points lower. Although, you know, again, it could go down. You're looking for stocks that just started breaking down. And again, we'll get to the pivots uh, in a second, but you're looking for channels that haven't broken down yet, right? Like look at Xilinx, look at uh, Airbnb right look at airbnb's channel right look at a channel like zs right just first first close confirming this whole channel you know look at a chart like visa right about to confirm this whole channel here right look at monster that came back down got rejected off the five day moving average back to back days look how much room it still has back to the downside so you're not supposed to be looking at stocks that are already down you know 50 70 percent for shorts you're looking for stocks that are breaking down out of their channels and once they confirm those channels, if the market continues to be weak, those are the stocks that are going to catch up and get pulled down, uh, just like everything else uh, we're seeing. So obviously, Netflix uh, kicked off earnings season, which is not a great thing uh, for technology. Is one of the reasons why they got slammed on Friday. You got IBM on Monday. Let me see what else is on Monday. IBM, uh, pretty much IBM is the biggest one. You got IBM on Monday, but then you start going into heavy technology. You got Microsoft on Tuesday. Microsoft, j and Triple M, you got AXP, you got Texas Instruments, uh, you know, and then you got Wednesday, right? You got Wednesday, all eyes on Tesla. You got all eyes on Tesla. You got all eyes on Intel. You got Boeing, you got AT&T, you got Las Vegas Sands, Lands Research. Um, you know, you got a lot of slew and then you start going into uh, Apple on Thursday, Visa on Thursday, then next week, right? You got everything else. You got Amazon, Google, Facebook. So we're, 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 we're starting, right? We're starting into earnings season. The question is, and I've experienced this in so many markets, a lot of times, unless the earnings just blow away the numbers, okay? No matter what they say, they're gonna sell off the stock based on market conditions. And we and I kind of talked about that on uh, right before Netflix's earnings, they would have to blow earnings away, okay, uh, for the market not to just say, hey, well, who cares, keep on selling. And that's exactly uh, what happened. So again, day two underneath uh, the 200 day moving average on the Qs, first day on the spies, first day uh, on the diamonds. Again, not a great, uh, not a great look uh, for the market. So let's talk about uh, Friday's, uh, let's talk about Friday's pivots. Um, Oops, wrong one. Let's talk about Friday's pivots. Again, you know, pretty much sell bias all across the board. Uh, again, I, I don't want to buy anything. You know, you're going to get a dead cat bounce in the middle of the day. I'm good, right? I'm good. I'm, I'm waiting for all these stocks. It's very, very rare you're going to see uh, a buy pivot until we start uh, really, really reclaiming uh, big support. So uh, this was the big one, right? For all you guys who are swinging it overnight, you have to. Uh, they report on Wednesday, maybe you get one more pull, but this was definitely the trade of the day, at least for me, 980, huge level of support. If it builds below, it can flush. Uh, Tesla got smoked, right? Just like everything else. Tesla uh, got absolutely smoked. It took out the 980. And this is the first close off rising support. Uh, they do report on Wednesday. You know, you probably get a lot of dip buyers coming in uh, late Tuesday, uh, early Wednesday for the close. Again, I don't know what's going to happen. I love Tesla, right? But again, loving a company and loving ch channels are two different sides, long, short. Um, I think if Tesla confirms, you can see here, you know, you had a 50 point move on Tesla. Uh, if Tesla confirms uh, Friday's channels, it has room. To about 912 so if you if you believe in the story right if you believe in the whole uh prospects on on tesla maybe take a shot there right if 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 that's your thing right if that's your thing for a longer term play but yeah there's a high probability uh if we do confirm friday's channels we go back down uh to 912. uh facebook got smoked uh 313 has held three times pre-market if it builds below can flush here was Facebook, uh, right? Here was Facebook all the way down to 303. Uh, I think there's a shot if it confirms Friday's prices goes down to 295, uh, testing the December 3rd lows. Uh, that was good. Uh, let's see here, let's see here. Uh, Peloton never got that. I'm still watching Peloton. Microsoft, again, again, they're taking down the bigger names, right? 350, 300, huge level. If it builds below, can flush more. Here's Microsoft, right? So here's Microsoft, took out this whole channel here. Uh, traded down to like 95 and change. Uh, you know, again, if it confirms more, it should get down to about uh, 290 and kind of reflecting all the indexes that it's a part of. So again, more lower prices there uh, as well. Xilinx held 184. I still like it. This thing loses that 184. It's going to get hit. Uh, Dollar Trail wasn't watching. I saw it got down to like 
I don't think Dollar Tree had a big move at all. Yeah, it only went down like a dollar and change. It still go. I, st I still think Dollar Tree probably sees 122, but it's not really uh, my thing. Uh, so here comes Facebook. There was actually a daily channel of 315, but it doesn't make a difference. 315, 313 uh, went down to 303. Microsoft coming down. Uh, Tesla, I said cover more down here at 958, 960. Uh, it's traded down to 935 after hours. Uh, here, you know, it's getting smacked. Facebook's getting smacked. Uh, everything's getting smacked, blah, 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 blah. So that's it, right? That's it. It's just, you don't have to be too creative, guys. Stay away from anything uh, that is overextended. Again, yes, can Amazon still go lower? Absolutely. But, but again, I would always remember the theory. You always want to be wrong right? You always want to be wrong jumping out of the first floor than jumping out of the 10th floor, right? So if you jump out of the first floor and you get hurt and they hold the ranges, you're going to get a, you're going to get a paper cut, right? You're going to get a bruised knee. If you jump out of the, the 12th floor window after it already broke down here, you're going to die. Okay. So just remember that the same pivot, right? The same pivot come Monday morning, on Tesla at 980 macro breakdown is a completely different story if, if Tesla starts going to 930, 920, 910. Completely different story. One part you could survive with a, with a, you know, with a hickey, the other part you got a severed head, so be careful. Even though it's the same symbol, the highest, the further it goes from the pivot, from the daily macro channel, the higher probability your, 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 appreci your, your level of success is going to start shrinking and shrinking, shrinking. That's why there's only one pivot and everything else is confirmation and continuation. Guys, have a great weekend. God bless. Be happy. Crack a smile. We only have one to life to live. There are no do-overs. Guys, God bless and I'll see you on Monday.